Well, good evening and welcome to our Bible study tonight on Wednesday, December the 16th. I'm glad that you're joining me. Hope you'll enjoy our time together. Uh, and uh, we're going to be looking at four different passages tonight and uh, kind of looking at them in a way to compare them to see what is taking place. It's four different passages, four different healings uh, by Jesus of blind people. And as we're looking at those, uh, I want to look at, at uh, five different things uh, within each of the stories so that we can compare them and, and see what's happening. First thing we're going to look at are the, is the person or the persons uh, that are needing the healing. Two, the actions uh, that were taken. Okay. Three, the method that Jesus used to heal them. And then what Jesus said, either before or after during the healing, and then five, the, the healing, what actually happened with that and uh, at the end of, of each of these stories. So we're going to look at those. Uh, we're going to be in Matthew, in John, and in Mark. And uh, so as we go through each of them individually, one at a time, I'll give you that scripture reference and everything so you'd be ready for that. We're going to start in Matthew chapter 9, by the way. And I am going to be reading from the New American Standard. Uh, as always, though, any uh, version you use will be just fine, and that'll work. <clears throat> Before we give, begin, though, I'd like to have a word of prayer and, uh, and just ask the Lord to bless our time together. Father, we thank you so much for this time that you have given us and the opportunity we have to uh, study your word together. I pray that you will just give us insight as only you can through your Holy Spirit, illumining your word, and just pray that uh, you will search us afresh and anew. If there's any unclean way in us, Lord, that you will reveal that to us so that we may be able to confess it, ask for your forgiveness, and uh, be cleansed from all unrighteousness. So there's nothing hindering our fellowship with you, none, nothing hindering our worship, nothing hindering your spirit being able to speak to our hearts. So, God, I pray that you will do that as well as I pray that you will help me just to die to myself, that your spirit will be able to speak through me and just uh, use this time for your glory, God. We look forward to it and uh, just thank you again for it. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Well, as we study this evening, um, <clears throat> just wanted to look at these different things that are, that are brought out during, in these passages in the stories of Jesus' healing. Uh, and uh, as we begin here in Matthew chapter 9, uh, we're going to be looking at verses 27 through 30 here in Matthew 9. So once you get there, you'll be ready uh, to follow along with me, and uh, with uh, starting in verse 27. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, Have mercy on us, son of David. And when he entered the house... The blind men came up to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, It shall be done to you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. Now, if you're writing this down, you can go ahead and write down, one, the persons. Well, the persons in this that needed the healing were two blind men. We see that in verse 27. And then the two, the action, uh, verse 27, the action that the men did were they were crying out to Jesus as they followed him, have mercy on us, son of David. They knew that Jesus was the Messiah. They believed that. And in verse 28, when he entered the house, the blind men came up to him. They came up to Jesus once they entered into the house. Okay? And notice this, Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? Scripture doesn't record them actually asking Jesus to give them their sight. It doesn't say that. Uh, it's just kind of understood. Uh, maybe Jesus, of course, already knew what they needed because he's Jesus and he's God and he knew everything. But at the same time, it's not recorded in Scripture. But yet they went up to him in the house. So those actions were taken. Now the method, look what Jesus does here in verse 29. He says, then he touched their eyes saying, it shall be done to you according to your faith. So the method was 
he simply touched their eyes. Jesus says a couple of things in this passage. One, in verse 28, he says, Do you believe that I am able to do this? This is the question that he asked them. And they, of course, respond yes. And the other thing, then, he says in verse 29, um, while he's touching their eyes, he says, It shall be done to you according to your faith. And then what is the healing? Number five, the healing is, verse 30, their eyes were opened. They could see. So there's that. That's one. The next passage is in John chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. So John chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. And read along with me uh, in this passage as well. As he, Jesus, passed by, he saw a blind man from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind? Jesus answered, It was neither that this man sinned nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me, as long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Verse 6, When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and applied the clay to his eyes and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went away and washed and came back seeing. In this passage, we see that the person, one, is a man who is blind from birth. Okay, we see that in verse 1. In, and also in verse 1, the action, the man was just sitting there as Jesus passed by. Okay? As he passed by, he saw a blind man from birth. Evidently, Jesus saw him and looked at him enough to where the disciples noticed that and, and then were asking the question. In verse 7, the man went and washed in the pool of Siloam. Now, this is uh, an action that the man takes, but it's also part of the method uh, that we will see as well. So, part of that method, though, was Jesus spat on the ground and made clay. Now, that sounds a little uh, unsavory to some, maybe, but uh, that's what Jesus did. He spat on the ground, and he, he rubbed it together and made clay, and then he put that on the man's eyes, okay? So he put that on his eyes and then told him, and here, here we go, we come to Jesus, what Jesus said, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Okay, so that's part of that method. He puts the clay on there that he made uh, from his spit in the dirt. Okay, he put it on the man's eyes, but then part of that, what he had to do was to go and to wash. And of course, we understand this as do, if this man has faith in Christ, he's going to go do that. And, uh, and what does he do? He does that. He goes to the pool, he washes, and after washing, the man could see. So there's the healing that takes place in verse 7 as well. All right? So the next passage of Scripture, we are in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 10. And we're going to be in verse 46 through 52. So Mark chapter 10, verse 46 through 52. And as you read along with me, we begin. Then they came to Jericho. And as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. When he heard that it was Jesus, the Nazarene, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many were sternly telling him to be quiet. But he kept crying out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him here. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, stand up. He is calling for you. Throwing aside his cloak, he jumped up and came to Jesus. And answering him, Jesus said, Why do you want or what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, I want to regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. 
Immediately he regained his sight and began following him on the road. So here the person is a blind beggar. And it's the only one in our other passages that is named. And we find his name is Bartimaeus. And we find that in verse 46. What is or what are the actions that are taking place? In verse 47, the man cried out to Jesus to have mercy on him. Okay, also acknowledging him as Jesus, son of David. Again, here is a believer in that Jesus is the Messiah. In verse 48, he cried even louder when people told him to, to be quiet, uh, to not bother the teacher or whatever. He cried out all the more. In verse 50, the action is taken once he is called by Jesus. He jumps up and came to him, came to Jesus. And then in verse 51, when asked what he wanted Jesus to do for him, he said he wanted to regain his sight. So what is the method that Jesus uses in this healing? We find that in verse 52. He simply spoke. Go, your faith has made you well. Jesus simply speaks. That's the method. And what did he say? There's, several, there's three things that he says. Verse 49, he says, call him here when he's saying, get, the, get him to come on over here. Verse 51, what do you want me to do for you? He asked him. He, of course, responds, I want to regain my sight. And then in verse 52, there's the healing when he speaks. Go, your faith has made you well. And the healing that takes place is in 52 as well. After Jesus spoke, the man regained his sight. So that's, that's the third uh, passage. This is the last passage here we're going to look at tonight. And it's in Mark chapter 8. So if you're in Mark 10 there, you can just probably turn back one page in your Bible. And you'll come to Mark chapter 8. We're going to look at verses 22 through 25. 22 through 25. As I read there in verse 22, And they came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to Jesus and implored him to touch him. Taking the blind man by the hand, he brought him out of the village, and after spitting on his eyes and laying his hands on him, he asked him, Do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see men. For I see them like trees walking around. Then again he laid his hand on his eyes, and he looked intently and was restored and began to see everything clearly. The person, verse 22, is a blind man. We don't have this man's name, and we don't know where he was because it said the action here is in verse 22. They brought him to Jesus and implored Jesus to touch him. Who are they? Jesus' disciples and those that were following him evidently uh, somehow found him or he was brought to them in some way and they brought him to Jesus. Now the method, <clears throat> again, uh, is a little bit, um, you wouldn't expect to, to hear this, but in verse 23, Jesus took him out of the village and Jesus spit on his eyes. Now, of course, spitting on anybody is not a nice thing to do. Uh, but I'm completely assured that Jesus did the right thing here. <laughs> and he was okay what he did because he was healing this man. But he spit on his eyes and then he laid his hands on him. Okay. Now, what's interesting about this is in verse 25, he laid his hands on his eyes again, a second time. And Jesus said, the only thing that Jesus says in this is in verse 23. After he spit on the man's eyes and laid his hands on him, he says, do you see anything? And the healing that takes place is partial. Verse 24, he gets some of his vision back. But notice what he says. I see men like trees walking around. Okay, That's when Jesus touches him again. And then in verse 25, he receives full vision, clear vision, and, and he's completely healed. That healing, note, was in stages. So, 
The summary, summarization of, of the four stories, okay? The persons. All were men and all were blind, okay? And only one is mentioned that he was blind from birth. Uh, the regain, I want to regain my sight, that indicates that he used to have sight. And look like trees uh, on that last passage that also, to me, indicates that maybe he used to have sight so that he would know what trees look like. Um, and only one is mentioned uh, that was a beggar, okay? As we know from other places in Scripture, we understand a lot of, of, of the blind uh, were known as having to beg for uh, outside of the temple or different places uh, because that was their only means of, of gaining anything. They were not able to work. So those are the persons, the actions. Two were just sitting as Jesus passed by. Two were following Jesus. One was brought to Jesus by the disciples or those who were following him. Two cried out to Jesus. Uh, well, actually, three cried out to Jesus. One didn't ask or anything. Jesus just went up to him. And then one was asked what he wanted Jesus to do for him. The methods were a lot different as well. One got spit on, actually spit in the face. One got clay made from Jesus' spit and, and the dirt, and then it was put on his eyes. Jesus touched the eyes of four of the men, with one of them being touched twice. One, Jesus just spoke to him. And then one had to go wash in the pool. Then as we come to what Jesus said, the things that Jesus said, uh, he called out for one of them. He asked four of them a question. He asked two about their faith and then just said, go wash in the pool of Siloam to the other one. <coughs> Pardon me. And then the healings, all received sight from Jesus. Jesus healed all of them. Different methods, different guys, different things took place, but Jesus healed all of them. Okay? Some, it's noted because of their faith. One, because of his action, and that also showed faith by him going and washing in the pool of Siloam. Three of the healings were immediate. But one of them happened in stages. And that is the reason for this study. As I was reading this passage you know, a while back and, and, and looking at this, that's what jumped out at me. Why did Jesus take, why did it take more than one touch from Jesus for this man to be healed? I've always wondered about that. I know that Jesus could have just touched him once. I mean, we see in the other story, he didn't even have to touch the one guy. He just said, go, your faith has made you well. And so why did he choose to touch this man twice? Why did it happen in stages? Why were there different actions taken in all of these passages? Why were there different methods used? Why not all the same? Now, tonight's study is not really meant to answer those questions. <laughs> I hope you're not too disappointed in that. I'm sure there are scholars that can answer them, okay? And there's uh, much more study that can be done to where you can understand why Jesus chose the methods that he did. Uh, and it's going to give you a much better understanding when you going through those studies of why things were done or not done which e with each situation. But my aim tonight was meant to make you think. Simply to make you think as you're reading God's Word. We read the stories and the miracles of Jesus, but sometimes we don't always think about what actually took place. Yeah, we know that the people were healed, but do we always stop to think about how Jesus did it or what actions were taken by him and the people being healed. 
were other people involved in bringing these needy to Jesus. All of these things and many more can be studied and learned in order for us to have a better understanding of God, who He is, why He does some things, and, and why He does not do other things, what He was trying to teach those who were there with Jesus during His time on the earth, and what is He trying to teach us now. Generally speaking, there were different actions and different methods because there were different people and different needs that needed to be met in certain ways. There were individuals that needed approached in their own special way in order for the healings and the salvations to take place. We have to understand we are all different. And Jesus comes to us in different ways. Why did Jesus do things differently and why does God do things differently with each of us now? Because of his great love for us and that love for each one of us. He meets us exactly where we each individually need to be met. He heals us each exactly where we need to be healed and in the exact way we each need that healing to take place. That's our loving Father. Only He could do that for us. He knows us each individually. He knows you. He knows me. He knows everyone on this earth who's ever lived and ever will live. And He knows exactly what we need, how He needs to approach us, to teach us, to grow us, to instruct us, to save us. He knows what needs to be done. God can do it anything, including what we think is the best way. But he will always do things in his best way for us. Even though we may not see that it's the best way, God knows and so he's going to do what's best for us. And that's because he loves us. So as we look at these healings and the different passages and the different ways that Jesus healed people when he was on this earth, we can understand he did that because there were individual needs that need to be met or needed to be met. And he does the same thing for us. Why he does that for these specific people, again, we can study that uh, and go into a greater study and find more information about that by scholars who, who know a whole lot more than I do about exactly what was happening at that period in time and in that location. But what I wanted to bring out tonight is, through all of this, God does things specifically for each one of us individually because he loves us so much and I want you to be encouraged by that you may be going through some difficulties uh, you may need some healing and uh, one person can uh, that, that may be going through the same thing you are has received healing this way someone another way but exactly what you need God can provide and he will provide and we just need to go to him and ask him and he will help us with that. So you be encouraged by this tonight. And Jesus is healing. And uh, if you want to learn more about why he took two touches uh, there in Mark chapter 8, you can go and you can study and find some things online uh, to be able to understand exactly why. But what I want you to know is God loves you very much as just you. And he's going to meet you right where you are to help you in whatever you need. So be encouraged by that tonight. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for our time together. I pray that you've been able to use me in this study in the way that you desired for your glory and for your purpose. And I just thank you, God, for your great love for us and being such a great, loving Father. Jesus, thank you for being willing to come and be our great Savior. We thank you that we can
come to the Father through you, only you. We know that is the only way. You are the only way. We thank you for, for being there for us and providing the spiritual healing we need for salvation and all the other healing that we need as we live our lives here on this earth for you. Just pray that you will continue to bless us and use us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me tonight. I hope you've enjoyed our study. I uh, hope to see you on Sunday as we come together to worship the Lord. And until then, be safe and God bless you.